But welcome. We're glad that you're with us this morning. If you're, yeah, if you're here in person, you guys can stand. And just uh, good morning, too, to anybody that's joining us online as well. We're thankful that you're with us this morning. Let's open up our uh, time of praise together with prayer. And then we can uh, continue just rejoicing this morning. Lord Jesus, we are excited um, that we can be together. We thank you so much for our brothers and sisters in the Lord. We're, we're thankful that we can encourage each other this morning. And we can um, build each other up. I'm thankful so much for each person that you've brought here this morning, each person that's watching online. And we just pray that you would bless them this morning, that you would encourage their hearts. In Jesus' name, we ask that, God. And we invite you, Holy Spirit, as we as we worship, as we praise, that you would um, remind us, that you would call to mind the things that uh, you want us to focus on during this time, and that we would be able to really uh, just be in your presence without distraction this morning. So we're excited for what you want to do this morning, and we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Yeah. 
says um, this is how we know what love is not that not that we've loved but that he has loved us and they're talking about Jesus and his love that led him to die on the cross to take all of the bad things that we've done and all of the things that they've caused in life on himself to take the consequences of those on himself that that is what love is that's the love that we're singing about this morning. We're so thankful for you, Jesus.
Jesus, we worship you, Lord Most High. We're thankful for your presence, but we worship you. <laughs> We're not worshiping your presence this morning. Thank you, thankful for who you are. Honored to be your kids. Thank you for this time that we have together, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, we invite you to continue working in this place this morning. Yeah, we thank you for your love. Open the eyes of our heart. Open our ears to understand more of who you are. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, we will continue with our hearts turned towards the Lord as we turn to our neighbors and we say hello. <laughs> good morning this good morning, good morning. Sure. Good morning everybody. Ah, what a peaceful day. <laughs> 
Thank you, worship team, for just drawing us into the presence of the Lord, and we just thank you for being here today, for everybody who's in person and also online. Um, and if it's your first time here, we just ask that you fill out um, a connection card as you exit, and then we have a special gift for you. Um, but we do want to let people know that we do have like four ways to give. So we do have the in-person, the containers that are in the back uh, that you can pass your offering through there. But you can also give through the app as well as um, online. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do that. And your faithfulness in your giving is such a blessing to us. It's truly, truly a blessing to us so that we can do what the Lord has called us to do. Um, we also want to just let you guys know that there are numerous ways that you can let us know about prayer and just things going on in your life that you might need us to pray for and intercede for as a prayer team. Um, so you can let us know about those through version or through the app and also through email. In person's always best, though. Um, we do have a couple opportunities for prayer. We do continue prayer in the park on Mondays where we're joining with the community. And it's just really been a sweet time of prayer where even just this past Monday, um, you know, we were praying about just being the light of the Lord in the community wherever God calls us to be, whether it's in our neighborhoods or in, in businesses and stuff like that. And so with each Monday, there is kind of a different prayer focus outside of just, you know, in general praying for our area. So just if you haven't been a part of that, we encourage you to do so. We meet at Hale Park on Monday nights um, at 7 p.m., and it's over by the flagpole if you'd like to be a part of that. Um, another thing that if you'd like to be a part of, we do have summer hangouts that are still occurring through August. Um, we actually even have one that's happening, a ladies hangout that's happening um, after service at Diana Almer's house. So if you didn't get to sign up the other week and you would like to, please find me after service and so I can give you some of that information. We'd love to have you um, and that way we can just have some time to connect and get to know one another. And that's what the summer hangouts are all about. So being that said, um, we also have a few more in the back where there's some to sign up for on the 17th of August um, in the evening time, as well as after services on the 21st and the 28th. So check out those sign-up sheets in the back um, of the church because it's an opportunity just to be able to find someone, as I had heard, like at one of our hangouts, just finding out somebody who maybe you don't typically talk to that even just sits on the opposite side of the sanctuary <laughs> that you're not used to. So we love to get to know our family. So those are all available to you. Um, we also want to remind you that we do not have midweek um, this particular Wednesday night because we have VBS. We have Vacation Bible School. And so we began a little bit of decoration for Vacation Bible School, but I know we're going to come back here at 2 p.m. with Iglesia Hope and finish some of the decor, uh, most of the decor this afternoon at 2.30 p.m. I said the wrong time. So if you had wanted to help volunteer, but you did not know what time we were meeting, and you didn't let um, Graciela Garcia know, 2.30 p.m., we would love to have you. Um, we are, for whatever remaining cards that we have left, we're also going to take a little bit of time to pass the remainder out. My boys and Pastor JJ passed out a ton of them yesterday afternoon, so I'm really thankful. And it's funny how much you notice, like, how condensed our area is. And what that is, is that's just opportunity for God to do what only he can do. And so if you could do anything else for Vacation Bible School, number one is prayer for kids to sign up, for parents to register their kids, for people to just get excited about what God can do and speak to little children when we speak to them right where they're at. And that's what this Wednesday through Friday is all about. So we do have a couple sheets in the back with a QR codes to sign up for your kids. Um, and so if you haven't registered but you'd like to, you can do that in the back area. And if you'd like assistance, come find me and we can do that as well. Um, and that is going to be an awesome, awesome time. So VBS is going to be Wednesday through Friday, 6 to 8 p.m. And um, the food or the theme is food truck. And yeah, I like food. It's going to be great. I have good feelings about this Wednesday through Friday. So <laughs> all right, that's all I've got. Have a good one.
Back and forth, that's a good thing. Welcome. <laughs> well, we're excited for you to come, and if you've missed it, we've been going through a series this uh, last couple of weeks, but if you did miss it, that's okay. I can bring you up to speed. But first of all, I want to know how many junk food addicts do I have out there? Let's be honest. Okay. Y'all like put your hand up with shame. Wow, that was... <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is not an AA meeting or something. All right, it's just, just being honest here, okay? So I'm, I'm a junk food addict myself. I'm trying to make better decisions. I've noticed that, that I kind of have to really make that switch. Uh, but sometimes it's hard. But, you know, what really helps me to see is when people I know, when they start eating healthy, I get to hear about how they feel. When they're starting to feel good, they're like, man, you know, I've been eating healthy. I have more energy now and all this stuff. And I'm like, that's something I need. That's something that would be a great thing. That's a good motivation for myself. And I mean, it makes a lot of sense because if you're only feeding our bodies junk, then we're going to trash our bodies, right? Makes sense. If you're putting junk in, you're going to trash your body. Well, today we're going to look at what are we putting inside of our hearts. And when the Bible talks about the heart, it means our mind, our will, and our emotions. That's what the Bible talks about when it says our heart, our mind, our will, and our emotions. So are we putting junk in to our minds, our wills, and our emotions? If we're doing that, we're going to trash our hearts. And so what are we putting in right now? And so we've been doing this series called Eat This Book, and we, um, the last couple of weeks, just to get everybody up to the speed, we talked about swallowing the hard truths that are in the Bible. Sometimes there's some hard stuff. We're like, you know what? I still got to you know, take that in and see what God has to say. Other times we talked about chewing really just thinking about what God's having to say, really allowing that to come into our minds and thinking about that throughout the day, chewing on that. It's a part of meditation, not emptying our minds of anything, but filling them with God's word. That's biblical meditation. And then last week, we talked about the Spirit seasoning the word during prayer. So when we pray, that helps to bring that seasoning, that flavor to the word. So if you missed any of that, feel free to check online. They're all there. But today, we're going to talk about what we are allowing into our hearts, our minds, our wills, and our emotions. And if what we're letting in, is it hurting us or is it healthy for us? Is it hurting us or is it healthy for us? You might be saying, well, pastor, we've been talking about eating the word, getting that word inside of us. Doesn't that obviously mean that it's healthy for us? Doesn't that make that all the time? But just because you start with something healthy doesn't mean it's going to end up healthy when you're done. Uh, Allow me to explain. Um, This last week, uh, uh, sorry, two weeks ago, I was at camp. I did camp for kids camp, and I also did camp for youth camp because I'm sadistic to myself, evidently. And uh, I was like, yeah, I'll help out. I don't need to sleep for two weeks. This is going to be fine. And uh, because I wasn't sleeping and because I was a dean, so I was like taking care of anything that needed to be taken care of. um, So because of that, I'm like, you know what? I better eat a little bit healthier. So I'm just going to hit the salad bar the entire time pretty much. I'm just going to be at the salad area. And you know what? I'd start off with good things. Now, these things help you out, right? Help you get the good stuff. So I get a whole bunch of lettuce on there. I'm like, all right, I'm starting off some great things. I'm like, all right, I got to get some more healthy things. I'll get some, some mushrooms, some tomatoes, some cucumbers. I'm trying not to make anybody hungry, I hope. All right, but you know, I'm trying to add that kind of stuff on. But how many of you know when you keep on going down the salad bar, it's not your friend? All right, it comes evil very fast. And I look over there, I'm like, oh, cheese, come on. Like, how are you going to have a salad without cheese? That's just wrong. And, and for me, I'm, I'm a cheese guy, right? We're close enough to Wisconsin, I can say that. And, uh, you know, I will put it on to where that's all you basically see is just the yellow on top. And I'm like, all right, now this salad is good. And then right next to it, of course, is bacon. I mean, come on. That's just evil. You're asking for a problem if you're putting bacon there. You know, so I'm out there pointing on there, and I'm like, well, you know what? I need more protein. So, you know, it just makes sense to, to get more meat on there. That, that helps out. And now I got a, a mound of meat on top of my cheese. And then we get to the dressing. Now, anybody who's ever been out to eat with me and it comes to a salad, I say the same thing usually to the waiter or waitress, depending on who's there. I normally say the same thing. I don't want to see any green. Give me enough dressing that I don't see any green. Then I know you've done your job. All right? And that's what I usually ask. And they'll bring a a thing, and it's like, that's not what I talked about. I meant extra. And so they bring another one. They'll sometimes stare at me to see if I'm actually going to use it, or I'm just asking for something just for the sake of asking for something, but I love it, and I put it on there. By the time I'm done, I should have just eaten a hamburger because I basically have the same amount of calories, right? It's essentially the same thing. You start off with something healthy, but you just keep going, right? The same thing is true with the Bible. When we start with the Bible, we start off with something very, very healthy. It's God's word to us. It's spoken word to us. You can't get healthier than anything more than that. 
And then we talked about this last week, some things that we add to it that are healthy the last couple of weeks, you know, actually swallowing those things, actually chewing those things, the spirit seasoning things. Those are other healthy things that we're adding to it that are great. It helps to bring more richness to it, more beauty to it, helps us to get more things out of it. Now, how many know we can keep on going? And we do it many times. We keep on going, and some of us, let's see if this actually works. All right. Some of us will look over and yell, I'm going to add some of my past because that looks fine. And we add our past to it. You know, so here's, here's some stuff that I did in the past. And you know what? When I'm reading about this person's story, my past is coming up. And so I'm going to allow that to come on there. And when I'm reading this, I'm going to think more of my past than I am on the Word. Because you know what? It starts to block what you're trying to read. And start to block that. And then other times, you'll bring other things that might get in the way. Maybe some of it is your doubts. You're saying, well, can I trust everything that God's saying that is, that's for me as well? Because maybe that was just for them. You know, and God doesn't have these truths for me because that was them. They were way better than I was, you know. And we can allow those doubts now to cover what was actually healthy before us. Maybe you come over and you're bringing some of your pain. Anybody ever brought pain when you were reading the Bible? All right, so I'm being honest. You know, I've done that before myself, you know, going through things and your pain comes over there and you start thinking about that when you're reading about other people's story and that starts to cover up what you're actually reading. Sometimes it's prayer requests. Now that might say that's a weird thing to, to put over there to say that's not healthy, but sometimes you're thinking more of your prayer requests than what you're reading. Sometimes you're like, this is more of my focus and I'm going on right now. Yeah, I know God's word saying something, but I can't read it right now because it's covering what I'm wanting to have. Sometimes it's just guilt. It's just guilt. God, I know where my thought was before. I know where this was. And, and pretty soon, you can't read what's right in front of you. It's covered. It's seeing no green beneath it. And something that was really healthy, something that was, something that was great for you, and you brought all those other things of, of, of swallowing and chewing and seasoning with the Spirit, all those other things, you brought all this other stuff up, but suddenly you covered it, and it's almost like you're worse off than you were before. Why? Because your mind isn't at ease because of all the junk you've laid on top. This can happen in our lives very, very easily. Anybody ever been there? All right, I'm glad I'm not alone. <laughs> so when we look into this, this is what we're going to look at today. How, what happens when we look at these things? And we're going to use um, Israel as an example. Now Israel, we're going, to, if you, we're going to be in Nehemiah chapter 8, if you want to turn there in your Bibles or look in your phones. Nehemiah chapter 8. Allow me to tell you what's happening here at this time. Uh, the people had just come back from exile. They had actually lost their land because they were disobedient to God and wanted to do their own thing. They wanted to be their own God. So God said, okay, if you want to protect yourself, you want to take yourself, here you go. This is what happens when I'm not with you. And they ended up in a bad place, like most of us do when we say, hey, I want my own way, right? And so they did that. They were off in exile. They come back a generation later. They're back here. They built up the city. They have built up the walls around there. And now they're starting to look into the word. So they built up the city, they built up the walls, now they're looking into the Word. And this uh, priest by the name of Ezra starts to share about the Word and share the Bible. So Nehemiah chapter 8, starting in verse 2. So on October 8th, Ezra the priest brought the book of the law before the assembly, which included the men, the women, and all the children old enough to understand. He faced a square just inside the water gate from early morning until noon and read aloud so everyone could understand. All the people listened closely to the book of the law. It's important for us to understand all the ages came to eat the word. They all came to eat this book. Everybody was ready for it. I've been on missions trips before in different places in different countries, and we said, hey, we want to do a kids' ministry thing when we're here. And I've had some people ask, what's the point? They're like, well, they'll figure it out when they get older. We're like, no, 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 no. They, they, they can think. They, this, is, this is a biblical thing. And we've actually had talks with different people in different areas because they're saying, well, you know, the kids, that, you know, they'll figure it out when they get older. They don't need to worry about this now. That's not biblical. It's for all people. That's why we, we put these uh, cards on your chairs so we can invite different people around you. You know, this isn't just for you to say, hey, I got a card. You know, we all know where different kids live in our neighborhoods, right? And if you don't, really, get off being isolated, right? Get outside. It's a good thing, all right? <laughs> but, you know, we know where different people are, and we can invite them. Why? Because they need to hear the word just as much as we need to hear the word. Amen? That was pretty weak. Let's try that again. They need to hear the word just as much as we need to hear the word. Amen? All right, and just so you know, amen means yes, we agree, so we'll get to that right now. Verse 6, then Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people chanted, amen, amen, and they lifted their hands, and they bowed down and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground, so they're ready to eat. Now again, amen means yes, 
I agree. So when we say amen, you're just saying, yeah, I agree. That's basically all you're saying when we say amen. And so like, all right, we're ready for whatever this book has to say. We're ready. We're excited for it. They came with the right mentality, the same mentality we have when we open up our Bibles. They came with that same mentality. Let's see what happens when they're looking through it. The Levites, Jeshua, Bani, Sherebi, Jamin, Achab, Sabathai, Hadai, Masani, Kelet, Azari, Jopathad, Hanan, and Pelani. I said it. All right, then <laughs> instructed the people in the law while everyone remained in their places. They read from the book of the law of God and clearly explained the meaning of what was being read, helping the people understand each passage. Now, what exactly was happening here outside of a bunch of names that I had to really try to work hard to say, right? All right, what was actually happening? You had Ezra standing here, standing up on a podium right by this water gate so everybody could come. And they had these other people that were around saying, hey, this is what he said and this is what it means in your life. What these people were doing was exactly what I'm doing with you right now. They were preparing the meal. So he came out there, and, and he was laying it out. He's like, here's the meat, here's the potatoes, here's the vegetables. And he was actually like cooking up and saying, hey, here's a meal that we can all use together. So that's exactly what I do. That's all a pastor does so that when they're preaching. And that's all a small group leader does when they're speaking. It's just taking what God already has and saying, here, I'm just preparing it for you so you can digest it easily, and it'll taste good. That's all that they're doing. Now, the same thing is true for you when you're reading the Bible. It's an important thing for you to look at commentaries, you know, from good Bibles, study Bibles. Those kinds of things are a good thing so you can understand exactly what you're reading. Because sometimes it's hard. You know, sometimes it's a little difficult. You get into some certain passages. I know I was talking to somebody uh, just uh, uh, before service, and they're like, hey, who wrote the book of Job? Because, you know, it's got some weird stuff in here, and, you know, how they get this kind of, a, I'm like, that's a great question. You know, these are good things. You know, these are great stuff to look through so we can actually come together. That's an important thing to do. So commentaries, those kind of stuff are great to do to help you to understand. I digress. All right, but let's see how they added to their meal. This is what I want us to focus on today. They got their meal. They got the healthy stuff. How are they adding on to this meal? And that's what we're going to focus on. Was it healthy or did it hurt them? Verse 9. The Nehemiah, the governor, Ezra, the priest, and scribe, and the Levites who were interpreting for the people said to them, don't mourn or weep on such a day as this, for today is a sacred day before the Lord your God. For the people had all been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. Now, why were they weeping? I mean, they should be excited. I mean, man, God has helped us out from the very beginning. He has a plan for us. He has a, a purpose for us. He's still caring for us. When we messed up, he still has great love for us. He still cares for us. His prophecy of us even coming back when we messed up is been fulfilled in our lifetime. There was a lot of things for them to be excited about, for them to be happy about, but that's not what they're seeing. Why? Because all their other kind of stuff was all piled up, and they couldn't see because they brought this other add-on to things that hurt. I mean, how many times have you read the word and thought, I'm the worst? How many times you read the word and I, I'm just the worst, I'm the worst person, I have screwed up on this, I've screwed up on that, and I am just as bad as this person, and God just needs to give up on me like he gave up on them, but he didn't give up on them, but we think that. You know, and we have all this kind of thought process. And even when, when Vanessa was saying, hey, he's leaving the 99, going after that one, he cares about you, you're like, yeah, but I'm way too far gone. Because I'm the worst. So those 99, I can't even be around those people. You know, maybe we have those kind of thought processes, and that's a lie from the pit of hell. Well, let me tell you that first off. But that happens when we're looking even at his word, even in worship, even right now as I'm speaking, and all these other things are covering the truth that he has for us, the healthy things he has for us. And we're actually hurting ourselves from missing the great things that God has. And that's exactly what they were doing. Now, I've said this numerous times, but some of you might not have heard it, and some of you just need to be reminded there's a difference between condemnation and conviction. Condemnation is, I'm the worst, I'm never going to be good, I'm just going to screw up, I'm going to kind of mess up. That is straight from the pit of hell. In fact, Jesus said in John 3, 17, I didn't come to condemn the world, but to save the world. That's not Jesus' job. It's not to make you feel bad. But he will convict us and say, hey, look, you need to make a change. You need to make a change. And it's important for you to make this change, because if you make this change, this will get you to where you want to be. That's a good thing. That's an important thing for us to understand. Now, if you're saying, well, pastor, how can I read the Bible and not feel like I'm the worst? How can I not do that? Because I'm always screwing up, and every single time I read it, I remember my screw-ups. How can I not feel that way? 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says this. All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare us and equip his people to do every good work. 
You might be saying, aha, see, pastor, the Bible says what is wrong in our lives. Bam, that's why I feel bad. That's why I feel I'm the worst whenever I'm reading it. That's why really I don't like to read the Bible. I'll just stay in maybe the first four books of the New Testament and just kind of hang out there because I don't feel as bad than when reading some other things. So I'm just going to stay there and maybe I'll feel a little bit. The difference is we're only focusing on what's wrong with our lives. We're missing the first part, what is true. Helps us to focus on what is true. It gives us truth and then it corrects us. It says, look, you have all this other junk that you have in front of you. I want you to move that off to the side and allow me to show you the truth that I have for you. Then you can make the changes that you need to make. It's not that we never change. We should be changing. We should be looking more and more like Jesus every day. We should have that as our aim and our goal to be more like Jesus every single day. That should be our goal. That should be what we're trying to do. But you see, the truth is I had a ton of calories on that salad, on that salad right? The salad that I made, I had a ton of calories. And if I want to eat healthy, I have to make a change, right? Can't just say, hey, I got a salad. Can't tell you how many people have said, well, yes, pastor, I read the Bible. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. What'd you get out of it? I'm a horrible person. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you read it. But just like I had all the calories, you have all your junk. And you need to make a change. Just like I need to make changes. I'm still working on that. I had less stressing last, yesterday. You saw that. All right. <laughs> I knew I was preaching this today. <laughs> the conviction came. Right. So we can ask ourselves. We can add the hurt of condemnation. We can find the health of conviction. We can add more things to us and say, well, when I'm reading this, I'm still feeling more guilt. I'm still feeling more pain. I'm still feeling more doubts. We can continue to add to that, or we can say, I want to see the health of conviction. God, help me to see what you're really wanting me to do. Because there are changes that we need to make in our life. Nobody is perfect, and you never will be perfect until you see Jesus face to face. There will always be different changes that we need to make in a great way. It helps you to be the person you ultimately want to be. Not just the person that God created you to be, the person that you ultimately want to be. And so that's a good thing to make, have those different changes. But the Israelites, they were adding to their hurt. They were bringing this sadness and this dirtiness, and they were bringing all this on top of the word. That's why they were crying and they were weeping, because they were missing the point of the meal in the first place. So there's many of us that miss the point of the meal when we're reading his word. This is God's love letter to humanity. We can miss that. We can miss the beauty in his words. We can miss the beauty in his voice and take it to be something else. You know, this thing has been used, unfortunately, to allow a lot of atrocities in history. It's been used in horrible ways because they haven't seen what it actually is. And people have allowed all their junk to be on top and just use a few verses out of context and let everything else come up on top and just shape the course of history in a horrible way, taking the love out of it and just trying to push people down. It's been used, in, unfortunately, in horrible ways. And we don't want you to live that way. And Nehemiah and Ezra and the leaders did not want the people missing the point of the meal. Nehemiah 8.10 says, And Nehemiah continued, Go and celebrate with a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks. And share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before our Lord. Don't be dejected and sad, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Is this how we react to the word? Do we celebrate? I don't think a lot of us do. Why? Because this wouldn't be a chore to do every day. This wouldn't be hard to do every day if we're celebrating. And we're looking at this and be like, oh man, I can't believe your love. And yeah, I know I've messed up, but God, your grace is so amazing and your, your mercy is amazing and this is incredible. And, and I could see the intricacies of who you are and we start to celebrate. If we did that, we'd be excited to be reading this. No one would have to tell us to. We would have to do an entire series on how to read the Bible. But the truth is, it's a sad number of people. 18% of all Christians are the only ones who actually read their Bibles during the week. Why? Because they're not celebrating. They're mourning. They have the other junk in front of them. So he just stopped reading it. He said, I'm tired of seeing all this other stuff on top. I'm just not going to do it at all. I'm going to skip the salad altogether and just eat the burger. I'm going to junk my life, but you know what? Hey, at least I can try to act like I'm not fooling myself anymore by saying I got a salad. I'm going to be honest. And they're missing the actual health that God has for them found in his word. We don't want to miss that. Amen. All right, so let's continue to look at this. We should celebrate because God is speaking. See, conviction should lead to celebration. Conviction should lead to celebration. See, the enemy just wants us to just pout and feel sad and eat a bunch of ice cream, sitting in sadness. Which anybody who's ever ate in sadness with ice cream, 
God bless you. I don't know how that works. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you always see that on TV. I just never got that. But, you know, I mean, that's how the enemy wants us, just feeling like I can't do anything and everything's over and I've screwed up too much and we're just done. That's how the enemy wants us to focus in in our lives. That's what he wants us to see. But you see, but God points to a life of no regret, a life of purpose, a life of a healthy heart. This is the good food he has for us. That's what his word points to. When we get past our junk and get to the health, that's what we find. Is the life worth living? And that's why conviction should cause us to celebrate. Man, if I get this stuff out of my life and I get away, I get to see even the greater things of God. This is awesome. We shouldn't be feeling bad about it. Yes, the people need to make changes. Absolutely, the people need to make changes. Yes, they had failed. Absolutely, they had failed. There was reasons for them to repent. But you see, repenting means to change your thinking, not just say, I'm sorry and I'm feeling bad. It's changing your thinking. And that's the important part. When we, God actually starts to change our thinking is when we get our thinking out of the way. See, all this is our thoughts, our emotions, our minds, our will. This is all the stuff that's affecting our heart. This is us getting ourselves out of the way so that he could speak directly to us. And that's what the people weren't doing. They need to make change, but they need to get themselves away from it and listen to God. Amen? We have to do the same thing. You know, the Bible is called the good news after all. There's a phrase that I like, and the first part of it is pretty well known. The second part of it isn't as well known, and this is the phrase. We are all sinners saved by grace, and we're saints that struggle with sin. We're all sinners that are saved by grace. God has helped us. He's helped us move forward. But you know what? We're all going to have different issues until we see Jesus face to face. It's not an excuse to keep on sinning. Check out Romans 6 through 8 if you want to look at that a little bit more in depth. There's not an excuse to keep on sinning. But it allows us to say, you know what? I'm not going to be perfect. God's working on me, and that's a great thing. I've gotten further on than I have before. So what happens most of the time is we say, you know what, I'm trying so much, I'm trying so much, I'm trying so much, and we've gone, you know, so many different steps, and then we take a step back and we say, oh man, well, you know what, I thought I could get to that goal, and I'm not there yet. Missing that we've gone this far. Missing the celebration. See, the people had already started to come further by realizing we need to change our life. We don't want to be like the generation before us. We want to actually see a shift. We want to see a change in our life, in our world, in our culture. We want to see that change, and we want to come forward. But they realized they had taken a step back. They had made some mistakes, and that's why they were weeping. See, the leaders weren't telling them, oh, well, you should feel fine. It's okay. Don't worry about it. No, they said, don't forget how far you've come. And God's going to help you to continue to go further. And that's what we need to look at. We are saints that still struggle with sin, but thank God. Thank Jesus is here to help us out every single day to move forward. Help us to, con to help to cleanse our hearts, to change our thinking, to change our mindset. The Holy Spirit is here to help to transform our minds, it says in Romans. This is what he helps us to do. We're not in this on our own, amen? That is a great news for other people to hear, and many of us need to know that as well. So we have to see this. What does this look like in our life? So yes, we still have issues. You know, I'm wanting to eat healthier. I'm wanting to look at this. But many of us still have a sweet tooth, right? We still have things that we want to see, we want to get into. You see, that's the beauty of the altar. See, the altar is something in this area that I think that we've kind of lost meaning of it. We've lost the whole point of the altar of praying together. You know, the importance of the altar, the sacredness of the altar is people will come it comes from the Old Testament originally. People would come with their sin and their guilt offerings and things like that. They would lay it on the altar. They would watch this animal get killed in their place. They would leave it there, and they would look at this animal bleed out and say, wow, this animal is now taking my spot. It's taking my place and all the things that I have done, and I'm able to now have a clean slate. The thing they didn't do was say, oh, man, this animal has done, you know, the, you know, I've come with all this sin and this guilt. This animal died, and, man, I still feel really, really bad. Why? Because that means that animal died for nothing. Church, there's many times we act like Jesus died for nothing because we still take our sin upon ourselves. There's many times that we can act that way. And it's a horrible thing. You know, the other part with the altar is they wouldn't just come with sin offerings. They'd also come with celebration as well. They come with thanks offerings and thanksgivings. And they would come in there. That's what we get, thanksgiving. That's where we get it from. You know, they would come with these types of things. And they would be coming there and just saying, look, I'm so glad of what God's done in my life, and I want to come and celebrate it with others. 
See, the whole point of the altar of us praying together is such a beautiful thing. And now we don't have priests that we go to in the Old Testament. Why? Because when Jesus died, the veil was ripped from top to bottom, so we have direct access to God. And now we can work together as believers praying with each other. That's the beauty of the altar today. Because we don't have to come with the blood of goats and, and animals and all that other kind of stuff. We have the blood of Jesus that we can come together knowing what he does, knowing the change that he made. And we could pray together. We could believe together. We can overcome together. That's the beauty of the altar now. And that's what we need to see because all this other stuff is just going to lay on top of our lives if we don't come and say, I'm going to leave it at the altar. We're just going to add this junk back to our daily reading and say, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. God wants us to go further than that. 1 John 1.8 says this, 1.8.9. If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all wickedness. What does this mean? There's a lot of times we'll be in church and they'll, and they'll have this time like we're going to have right at the end of here, so just get ready. And we're going to have a time where we're like, hey, we're going to pray together. And you're going to be like, I'm good. I'm good. I don't need to go forward. Stop fooling yourself. None of us are good because we're not in front of Jesus. None of us are good. People that are praying up here at the altar, we got to pray ourselves before we come up the altar. We got to do that ourselves. We're praying with you because we believe what God's going to do um, with our prayers together because God is there in the midst of it. But we need just as much help. When we're asking people to come down here, when we're asking people to pray together, it's not like anybody's coming down there and they're less than anybody else. No, they're more because they're understanding who God is. That's more. The person who sits back and is like, yo, you guys go forward, I'm good. You are fooling yourself. And I'm sorry if you're feeling a little bit uneasy on this. It's just reality. You're fooling yourself. I have people who pray over me all the time because otherwise I'm fooling myself. If I think I'm good, oh, I'm a pastor, I'm fine, please. We're all fooling ourselves if we don't have that time, that altar time together. So we come to the altar, we come with our hurt, and then we leave feeling healthy. Why we don't bring the hurt with us? We leave it here. Again, they're not bringing the sacrifice with them. Oh, you killed this animal. I'm going to bring it back home. No, they, they left it there. And we can feel that healthiness again. They can feel that difference. See, Jesus took our hurt on the cross. Don't try to take it down and carry it again. Allow it to stay at the altar. Allow it to stay there. See, because if we're honest with ourselves and with God, that's how we go from conviction to celebration. I've said this a few times, and I'll say it again for those who haven't heard it. If you leave the altar still feeling bad, you need to stay. You're not done yet. God's still got to work in your life. And maybe you're not going to be praying with another person. Maybe you're just going to be praying by yourself. That's okay. We have time before the other service comes in. God still wants to work in your life. None of us should ever leave here the same way we came in. Why? Because we're in God's house and we're looking at his word. None of us should leave the same way. And this is a big shift that happens when we come and we pray together. There should be that shift from conviction to celebration. Let's continue in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. It says, My dear children, I am writing this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the only one who is truly righteous. He himself is a sacrifice that atones for our sins. And not only our sins, but the sins of the entire world. Have you realized that Jesus is praying for us as we eat this book? He's praying for us. He's praying for us as we're swallowing those hard truths. He's praying for us as we're chewing. He's praying for us as the Spirit is seizing it. He's praying for us to say, I don't want you to look at the rest of the junk anymore. I want you to have the health. This is what Jesus is doing. This is the beauty of what he's seeing. Find the reasons to celebrate. Find the reasons to celebrate. Don't allow your junk to cover the healthy things that God has. Because all you're going to be left with is hurt. And God has something more for you. See, because when you understand the healthy things that God has for you, you're going to share about that truth. You want to share about that health. Why? Because it's so good. When you see that this is a love letter, you'll be like, man, why aren't you reading this? Why, wh how are you missing this? You're not coming like slapping somebody with a head, over the face with a Bible saying, why aren't you reading your Bible? No, you're like, man, this is so good. You should check this out. This, this is amazing. That's what we do in small groups. We slid by other people who are like, hey, this is awesome. I want to share this with somebody else. And that's our small group leaders. 
I want to share this with somebody else. This is so great. I, somebody else, other people need to know this. Other people need to understand this. And I want to break this down just like the Levites did. Having Ezra share, this is what the word is. Now I want you to understand it because it's so good. I don't want you to miss anything of it. That's the beauty of it. And that's what God wants to show it. But again, we start to share that with others when we start to understand that. You see this in Nehemiah 11. And the Levites too quieted the people, telling them, hush, don't weep, for this is a sacred day. So the people went away to eat and drink at a festive meal, to share gifts of food and to celebrate with great joy because they had heard God's word and understood them. There's nothing greater than when we hear God's word and understand it. We understand that this is his love letter to us. There's nothing better than this. See, the people shared and celebrated together. Why? Because healthy people have healthy relationships. They want other people to be healthy around them as well. I mean, that's why we're doing the hangouts that we're doing. You know, we got the ladies one today, so ladies can hang out and get to know each other and help out one another, speak into each other's life. You know, we're having the other ones on the 21st, 28th, and 17th. Why? Because we want people to speak into each other's lives. We want people to show the joy that God has. Just this last uh, Sunday, we had our, uh, the hangout actually at Jen's and my place, and we had a great time, and it was fun, and we, there's certain connections we can't even realize. We found out two different people are godparents of the same kid that didn't even know that, that they go to the same church. I could point to them, but I didn't ask them ahead of time. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's like the most wild thing, and they're just sitting there talking like, I recognize you from somewhere. Where is it? And they're like, what? Oh my gosh. And they're like blown away. It was insane. Why? Because there's different connections, and then, man, and God can speak to those things. That's just awesome. It's awesome to see what God can do when people just hang out together and just talk. And God can bring things up. Another person, Jen, brought it up. They said, man, I got to talk to people I didn't really get to talk to on a Sunday. Why? Because I sit on the other side of the church. <laughs> we just hang out with our areas, our crew, I guess, you know, which shouldn't be happening. Uh, but, you know, that's the beauty of us trying to get together. Why? Because it's healthy relationships. That's why we do prayer in the park. We're getting together with other believers, not just people in our church, but other people in the neighborhood that are believers. We're doing that as well. We're doing the VBS to get kids from all over the place to hear who God is. We do different ministries here within the church so that God can be brought out and people can understand him and find the joy that is found in Jesus. That's the point. Many people don't know that we have this advocate who cares for us, who loves for us, who's praying for us, saying, don't worry about the rest of this junk. Look what I did on the cross, and you can have this kind of freedom as well. This is the joy that Jesus wants us to share. This is the joy that's found in him, amen? And this is what we do. So we go around, we tell people. We tell our neighbors, we tell our family members, we tell our friends. And maybe you're sitting there and like, okay, I was okay with the first parts, but now you're getting a little too close to home. Neighbors, family, friends, it's a little too close, it's a little, you know, that's not my personality type, whatever you might want to say, you know? You know, that's, that's just, just a little too far. If you care about something, you're going to share something. You know, when I first started to make a, a big shift in my life, really towards working out, I'm still working on the eating right, but when I started working out, it was because we were um, talking with our, our young adult group, and we were speaking to them, and they are like, hey, we want to do, we want to go out and, and uh, um, I just totally forgot the name of it, jump out of a plane, what's that called? skydiving. Good grief. And they're like, all right. <laughs> like, suicide? No. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, it's, so skydiving. And, uh, and they're like, hey, we want to go skydiving. I'm like, dude, that's awesome. Let's totally do this. We can plan that. And one of the guys looked at me and goes, yeah, you can't be 245 or over. I was like, and? You know, so <laughs> God bless you too. Um, and I realized I went on the scale. I'm like, I'm at 245. I didn't realize that. Um, you know, and it was just kind of a little bit of a wake-up call. I'm like, man, I can't even jump out of a plane. Uh, you know, but it's just, it's just sometimes we can just get stuck in our routines that we don't realize the junk that we're allowing in and our, stain, our steadiness, our not moving and everything and actually doing what we need to do. And we don't realize that stuff starts accumulating in our life. And we don't realize what that's doing to our body. Same thing is true spiritually. We don't realize what we're allowing into our hearts. And when we're stagnant, when we're not moving, when we're not getting involved in what God has around us, we don't realize we start putting on the pounds and the weight of all this other stuff that's been covering around us because this stuff has been what we've been eating, not the good stuff. It's very easy to do. So I started working out, and I got a change, and I was like, all right, now I can jump out of a plane. Um, but you know I mean? I saw a shift, and when I saw that, a lot of people saw the weight come off. I lost 30 pounds fairly quickly. And people were like, man, that was, that's amazing. What did you do? And I said, oh, well, this is my workout routine. I started sharing that with all kinds of different people because people could notice the difference. So I started sharing that with everybody. Why was I trying to boast? And like, let me tell you my workout routine. This is how great. No, I was, I was like, man, this is so easy to do. You can easily do this. And I was just sharing it with other people. And people were like, oh, that's awesome. They write it down. I, could, I think I could do that. And this would be great. That's all it was. That's how simple it should be to share Christ. 
This is what God's done in my life. Man, it's awesome. And you can do this too. This is great. It's not just for me. This is something that you can do. It should be that easy. See, it was easy for me to say that with my health. It's easy for some of us to say this with our health. But how hard is it for us to say about the word? And that's what we want to pray about today. You don't want anybody leaving here with all the junk, all the white stuff covering up the green stuff. We want you to see the health. As Vanessa comes up, I want to encourage you today. So we want others to be healthy too. Look at what it says there at the end of Nehemiah verse 12. They had great joy because they had heard God's words and understood them. They had heard God's word and understood them. That's the key. And how do people get to understand God's word? They get to hear your story. They get to hear what God did in your life. You might be here saying, well, you know what? I don't have this horrible story of sin. I was doing all these horrible things, and then I came to God, and everything went great, and that's not my story. So my story doesn't sound as good or as flashy as somebody else, and so maybe that won't touch their life. I still remember I, I had my sister who's a, a children's pastor down in Texas. I had her share one time at a, at a, youth, uh, a youth event. I had her share her testimony. My sister and I were both raised in the church. I chose one way. She chose another way. She was right. <laughs> I ended up coming back to God, but she chose another way. And by any looks at it, she looked like she was the most perfect Christian on the planet. I mean, honestly, I would always tell people all the time, like, if you want to see a woman of God, tell my mom, my sister, I've been around them. They are women of God. I can tell you, you know, I, I see you. We all know who this person is behind closed doors. I'm like, look, that is who they are. And she started sharing how God helped her out from brokenness because she had had such a hard time. She had had some abuse that happened at school when she was younger. She was physically abused by a teacher. Back then they could do that. Well, they shouldn't have done that, but back then they could. And she was told that she was stupid in front of her class. They'd bring her up in front of the class. They would paddle her every single day and tell her she was stupid in front of the entire class. And every single day she went through that torture. The next year, the next year she did a test and they found out she was actually a genius. She was so smart, she was getting the concept and she was done. So she was off looking out into the oblivion. She ended up going to a special school out of that. We ended up to a different school because she had tested to get into it. A magnet school that you could only get in if you had X amount of uh, IQ points and so on and so forth. She ended up going there. You would think by her doing that and then also getting in the special part of that special school that she'd be like, oh yeah, I know I'm not stupid anymore. No, that was still in her heart. That was still in her soul. It wasn't until she was 18 or 19 years old that she really brought that to God and allowed him to break that. So she was saying what was happening when she was reading that word, she would hear about the greatness of God and the beauty of who God was, but all she saw was her past, her pain, her doubts, and I must not be good enough for him because, you know what, I wasn't good enough in my past. She could preach the daylights out of this book, but yet what was she actually reading? What was she reading? That was one of the most godly people I know was going through that. Friends, we all got stuff we need to look at. As the prayer team comes down, I want to encourage you. I specifically put these verses right before James 5. Here's what James 5 says. When you move all the paper, you move all the junk, you move all the other stuff away, this is what James 5, starting verse 13 says. Is anyone among you suffering? He should pray. Is anyone of you cheerful? He should sing praises. Is anyone of you, among you sick? He should call for the elders of the church and they should pray over him after anointing him with olive oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick person and the Lord will raise them up. And if they have committed sins, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The intense prayer of a righteous person is very powerful. What does this mean in our lives? We need to take a pause and look at what we're allowing in our hearts. Okay, my sister was just the perfect Christian on the outside, but had all this hurt on the inside. I think a lot of us can be in that same place. It doesn't mean you're a horrible person. It means that you need to say, God, what needs to be looked at in my life? If we could stand today. With every head bowed and every eye closed, and we do that just so we can stay focused. Just as they said, Nehemiah, this is a sacred day. This is a holy day. This is something that's different. 
If you're here today, maybe you're that one, that one that's saying, you know what, I know about God, I've, I've heard about God, but I honestly am not following God. I want to make that difference today. He's reaching out to me. I want to reach back. If that's you here today, the Bible says it's very easy to start to follow him. We confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, saying, I want you to call the shots. And believe in your heart that God was, Jesus was raised from the dead. And if we believe that who Jesus is, we're going to believe his word. We're going to be looking to his word, and we're going to want to follow him. Do those two things. You will be saved. Go from being that lost one to going back into the fold. So if that's you with every head bowed and every eye closed, I want you just to raise your hand. We want to pray with you about making that decision. I see that hand. Anyone else? God, we thank you so much for the honesty, first off, that is shown. God, right now, you see this person's heart. You see where they're at. They're saying, I want to make you Lord. I want you to call the shots. I want to start to follow you. So God, I pray right now as they're making that confession. They know that they've called their own shots before. God, that's where that part of repentance comes into. God, help to change their thinking. Allow them to start to see you for who you are. Jesus, we believe that you came, you died, you rose again, and we're excited to see you again. I pray right now, as they're admitting that confession, admitting that belief, they will know they are saved through you. Jesus, you did the work for us, and we are eternally grateful. We thank you for all that you're doing. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. We could all look up right now. That one who raised her hand, if you didn't raise your hand before and you would like to talk about it, we'd love to talk to you about it afterwards, just about what that decision means. So please see myself or my wife after service. For everybody else, there's an important part in that verse of God leaving the 99 for the one that I always had a problem with. We left the 99. Now they're all, they're all screwed up. Right? Anybody else ever thought about that when you read that verse? Now you're like, I'm going to think that every time I look at it, okay? But I mean, I've always thought that. I was like, okay, well, the one was out, but the 99, now they're shepherdless. What's, what's going on? See, the thing is, we think of shepherds in our own stupidity because we're not from the East. So we think about it in a Western way. Well, there's one person who's in charge. That's not how it works. You had a head shepherd, you had under shepherds. The under shepherds would just do what the head shepherd wanted them to do. So when the head shepherd was going for that one, the under shepherds were taking care of the 99, guiding them to where they needed to go but they wanted to make sure they were healthy. That was their job. Their job was to protect the sheep. Their job was to help those sheep, to make sure they had what they needed. This is our job praying right now. This is what the altar is right now. This is the 99th time. I'm so incredibly happy for that one, but now it's for the rest of the 99 to get their health as well. So we're going to talk about three different things. I want you to come forward, and if you want to come forward for any other prayer, we'd love to pray with you. But these are the three things we're going to focus on today. Do you have a healthy conviction? Maybe God put something on your heart right now and you're saying, you know what? God's showing me this. Even when we're looking through this, something's coming up in my life and I, I, I'm feeling this. And again, not condemnation, not feeling that you're the worst or anything else like that, but God's putting something on my heart saying, I need to make this change. I want someone to pray with me that I can make this change. Why? Because we're here to encourage one another. That's what prayer does. We're coming up with God and we're encouraging one another. So if God is putting that on your heart right now, we're gonna actually come forward in just a second. Maybe you're here and you want, need to go from conviction to celebration. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people in church and their entire time they're in church are like this. <laughs> Praise God. Yes. I agree with you, Pastor. I'm like, man, the joy of the Lord is your strength. All right. Um, we're missing it. We're missing it. And that's why it's in Nehemiah. The joy of your Lord is your strength. You might be following God, but you've got no strength because you haven't found the joy yet. And God wants to help you go from conviction to celebration. You need that today. We're having to come forward in just a second. Last one. Maybe you need to start to share the good news to friends, family members, and neighbors. And you're saying, all right, God's put people on my heart. I need to step out. And maybe the easiest way is just to invite them to VBS. That might just be your easiest first step. But you're saying, all right, I know God wants me to do something different. I'm asking him to help me out. So you want prayer for one of those three things or anything else. We want to pray for you today. Again, when you come forward, it's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. We don't ever want to fool ourselves, amen? So feel free to come forward.